although in the last years we have um, had some proposals from representatives from translations that they are speaking about uh, power turn in translation yeah. studies. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> so that power is one of the concepts. But I think you could represent something to, to, to one step further and to introduce not the, the politics of translation. I uh, would like you to sp say something more about this. Well, uh, it's, uh, uh, I'd like to use power in much more sort of the Foucauldian sense, precisely because power is not the, the uh, predetermined uh, uh, sort of the exercise of imposing something upon other, other person or other people. And instead, power is uh, essentially operating in the way uh, certain realities are uh, articulated. Let, let me explain. Um, that is, power is always operating in talking about, for instance, for instance, some people are abnormal. Abnormality itself is an a, a object created by certain way of dealing with uh, social uh, experience. And that, for me, is a very uh, important instance of power. Therefore, uh, by introducing power, uh, I'd like to show that translation does create things or uh, explain or describe things a new way. So it's a very, very uh, creative process. At the same time, it is a way to introduce new forms of, what should I say, control, or uh, for gold called rationality into the social relations. So th precisely, th that is the reason why that I'm I interested in, in the question of translation. Yes, because if I can quote you here, uh, rethinking translation is it in its worldly uses for the exercise and legitimation of imperial power, the manufacture of national community, and as a site of survival and resistance for people dispressed uh, by empires and nations. So you have this power both ways. Yes. Yes. Both uh, resistance, but also exercise yes. of uh, yes. of, uh, of power. Yes. Yes. Mm. And then, uh, in fact, uh, when you build, I think th this can be generalized. But I think in, uh, when you think about uh, a colonial uh, modernity, in fact, translation has worked amazing powerfully. And then most of the the uh, uh, national languages of so-called third world countries or uh, newly independent countries were in fact uh, produced through translation. And then Japanese is no exception. Japanese was simply uh, created, invented in late 19th century with interaction with uh, European colonialism. And then they imposed the same kind of problems onto minorities within the empire. And this could co be called this schema of configuration that you are speaking about in a way? Yes, mm. uh, this is exactly the way that I think uh, national language, national culture uh, and, and uh, uh, population have been naturalized. That's why, that, uh, for instance, if you go to China today, and you find 4,000 years of Chinese nation. <laughs> Or uh, some, some French anthropologists talked about the French national characteristic in uh, 10th century before Christ. <laughs> and that's exactly the case of a typical form of, and then therefore that the uh, uh, Japanese talked about 26th century of Japanese nation. <laughs> but the, the, these are all naturalized, and there is a reason for it. And then, uh, but if you accept that kind of naturalization, then you have to view always there are <laughs> different na national languages. And then between two different national languages, translation must be conducted. But then translation becomes completely apolitical. So, uh, and functional to a kind yeah. of a regime That's or right. a social perspective That's and right. a social view yeah. of uh, organization of the society. That's mm. right, mm. yes.
Mm. So um, I want to, to interrupt that kind of operation and, 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 uh, and to show that the, that kind of regime was historically constructed mm. in a very, very mm. recent history. Mm. Very recent and very s strong. The strong, <laughs> extremely strong. Yes. Extremely strong. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could speak about uh, Traces, uh, yeah. this multilingual series uh, and journal, as a kind of of, um, of demonstration of this project yes, you have. Yes, that's right. Could you s tell us about well, Traces? Uh, the first, I think, uh, it was very, very important to uh, respond to the reality, increasing what, what uh, some people called globalization, in which English has become the kind of uh, pseudo universal language. And in fact, it, it clearly facilitated uh, uh, new types of network and so forth. But at the same time, in many countries, it operates as a discriminatory scheme. That is to say, uh, less educated people, particularly those people without access to uh, English uh, language, have no career prospective. So it's a class issue. And the, uh, as a result, it is very uh, uh, understandable that there is very implicit, strong hatred of English language. And that there is an increasing uh, a discussion about English language imperialism. And uh, we have to respond to it. But one way of responding is that resort to national language, their own mother tongue. But as a matter of fact, the resort to uh, national language, in fact, reinforces the uh, English language imperialism. Because if they closed into their own uh, national community, and there is no way to negotiate with outside world, and then capital demands you to negotiate with with uh, outside world, and if you don't, then you are doomed to perish. So in this sense, you have to see fundamental complicity between global capitalism and national language. National language is not the, the uh, protest against global uh, uh, capitalism, but it is basically uh, imbo endorsement of it. And in order to change the situation, the yes, so in order to deal with this situation, we really have to call into question status of English. Therefore, we uh, created this uh, trans, uh, uh, well, multilingual uh, journal in which uh, the everyone, every contributor is supposed to speak to foreigners, in a sense, the, the readers who don't understand the author's uh, language, but not necessarily English. So English is not the, 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 the meta language of all other languages. Rather, we position English as equal to Chinese, Japanese, and, 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 and Spanish, and, and German, and so forth. By doing so, we really wanted to create the opportunity or social space in which people speak always to foreigners, as foreigners. That is to say, uh, today, I think intellectuals must speak essentially as foreigners towards other foreigners. And then th this is the basic scheme within, within which we wanted to uh, launch a new uh, publication. And of course, uh, I mean, uh, we still rely upon national languages. You know, we talk about uh, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, English, uh, Spanish now, and, and, and German. The, but nevertheless, this is the first step. Of course, and it's yeah. a very important and very interesting, interest, interesting step towards a reality that is already existing out there, I mean, at least in how people speak and how also in new literature now. Yeah, yeah. People are that are multilingual, they start more and more to write yes. among, right, right. among the languages. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, um, so this is, I think, a step on the way towards to take into account that we are all foreigners. I think that is an important <laughs> statement. But at the same time, 
it is extremely expensive and, and labor intensive <laughs> to practice this idea. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine. So, uh, uh, but it's a very important in, uh, um, uh, project, I think. Uh, and um, you have um, these uh, these publications, and you have seminars. I know this European uh, journal on the online EICP. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yes. It's uh, it's a kind of same pro project on using different languages. Well, uh, I think I was invited by the organizers, uh, uh, some uh, some friends, and then. They ha share the similar ideas, and although that uh, the, the their concerns were much more about, for instance, Arabic, and and so forth, so that uh, the we try to to uh, connect, and in a sense we uh, uh, been trying networking, so that I think uh, we can connect it uh, through uh, uh, various uh, publications and groups, and then we gradually create, well, in a rhizomic way to connect uh, many, as many languages as possible. And I'm, uh, as editor of this new journal, Translation, I'm very curious about your, uh, your work, uh, also because what one of our projects is to go beyond translation studies mm -hmm. as, a, as a discipline. Yeah. Uh, and I see in uh, in, uh, in your publications we don't find the usual names that we all r always see in all <laughs> the same conferences. You know, all the, the scholars. Nothing, not to take anything away <laughs> from them, but they okay, a bit repetitive. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's a discovery to see new names, new faces, <laughs> <Okay>. new <laughs> new concepts, yeah. uh, and that's very interesting. So uh, there. And maybe there has not been so much dialogue uh, either between representatives for translation studies and the people you work with that are coming more from social sciences. I would say that uh, probably we, uh, I have uh, less uh, contact with people who are uh, working within uh, translation uh, studies, particularly because the uh, General tendency is that uh, uh, we are much more theoretically oriented, and um, people in working in uh, translation studies are not th that interested in theoretical issues. Uh, but I think we are gradually building some kind of uh, contact. But at the same time, uh, it's this applies to uh, another field I'm working in is area studies in the United States. Uh, you have uh, different uh, uh, names for these. Uh, that is another uh, ghetto, ghettoized field, where that uh, uh, people belonging to that discipline or those disciplines uh, tend to be very, very defensive, and they don't want to entertain theoretical intervention. But I think uh, study of uh, translation, in fact, requires. Uh, it, it's Im impossible to draw a line in, in when you study a uh, translation between some kind of uh, um, uh, positive uh, evidence and then theoretical intervention. Uh, unless you really deal with uh, theoretical I issues, it is impossible to uh, uh, see certain uh, historical um, reality. And then also, unless you have a certain kind of very uh, 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 historically oriented research, it is very difficult to come up with any uh, effective theoretical insight. So, if you could say in some, give some concluding remarks for uh, the future, where do you think the concept of translation can bring us, uh, or where should we go? Is it towards politics of translation, um, where do you think we should go? Well, the direction I hope translation studies will develop, and particularly the kind of field uh, your journal uh, translation uh, points out to, is in fact re-conceptualization uh, of disciplines. 
That is to say, uh, I think your journal demonstrates that every uh, sort of the de uh, um, serious concern about uh, how to re-evaluate and reform uh, existing um, disciplines, academic disciplines. And particularly important is that unless we really uh, reflect upon uh, uh, new disciplinary possibilities, I think I'm afraid humanities disciplines in the humanities will continue to decline mm -hmm. because uh, disciplines in the humanities have been, in a sense, uh, uh, invigorated mm -hmm. by the formation of nation state. It's so closely tied with the fate of nation state. But uh, we are really, I, I, I'm not saying that the nation state will uh, disappear, but I'm really saying that that format essentially uh, initially created by uh, uh, 18th century uh, uh, ideas mm. of, of basically national intellectuals um, can, cannot be sustained. So unless we really uh, reflect upon the basis of not only uh, social sciences but uh, humanities, mm. I think uh, it's already universities are already in crisis but it will continue. And, and we have to do something about it. And then I tend to see the possibility or hope uh, in the development of uh, translation studies or some kind of theorization of translation. Yes, thank you. <laughs> can I ask you just the last question? Yes. If you can tell us something about what you're working on now. Where okay. are your, uh, your uh, interests today? Uh, um, I'm working on a book. I hope I can finish this summer, but I'm not sure about it. It's uh, the, the, the book whose title is Dislocation of the West. Because I would like to... Uh, yes, the title of it. That it's a part There's of... There's of an article you yeah. have in this, uh, yes. in the journal, yeah. uh, John Basic. And... Uh, because uh, I don't think the West is a substance. It is configuration of power relations. And then power relations are today very, very rapidly changing, which affects the way we position ourselves and then how we continue to produce knowledge. So uh, using... Uh, uh, inquiry into translation, I would like to examine political constitution and historical transformation of what is usually referred to as the West, or uh, you know, historically in the, until the 19th century, probably it was Europe, or uh, in other languages uh, than, than English, it's Occident and so forth, mm -hmm. but which is of course related to the question of Asia. Mm -hmm. And we, I am in Asian studies, mm. but I am very, very doubtful that something called <laughs> object called, uh, of academic inquiry called Asia actually exists, because it's simply a reflection of the West. But these relations are rapidly changing. So uh, I want to address the question uh, in, in this book. And we look forward to reading <laughs> it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah.